Welcome to Muddy River News This Week, furnished by Harvey's. I'm Bob Goff. The Quincy Catholic Elementary Schools are looking at a little bit of a change. And as I was just talking with my guests before we started this, change is not easy. I'm talking to Monsignor Father Leo Inlow, head of the Quincy Deanery, also the pastor at St. Peter Parish, as we talk about what's going on with the Quincy Catholic school system. Welcome. Well, thank you. Very happy to be there. And you're just trying to, it looks like, again, after, uh, after a weekend of listening to uh, what people, uh, how they accepted the, the initial proposal, um, and after just kind of trying to read the tea leaves, uh, you, you, were very, uh, you were very correct. Sometimes people just don't like change. That is correct, and I can understand it. I really can, because this is, you know, what we were trying to do is to create a conversation with the people of the area. Conversation that was well needed. A conversation that somehow say, you know, sometimes we can't always do the same things we always did because um, the financial challenges, the some of the other difficulties that that um, that happen when we have four different schools, and the key, I think, what I was trying to do throughout, and by the way, I'm. I sort of drew the, the, the shorter straw. That's why I'm here. <laughs> not, because I'm, not because I'm pushing any kind of agenda. But the, the whole point was that we, need, we needed to... Um, the days of a, the parish school system, um, although it started back in the 1800s for immigrants, for the poor, that's why many of the nuns came in and God love them, had this charism for teaching in our schools so that the, these Catholic immigrants um, could take their place in society. And part of that was not only to educate, but also to preserve and support the Catholic faith. Because at that particular time, the public schools were actually um, schools of various denominations. And so the Catholic schools then um, developed in response to that, and also to help prepare the young people for their role in society to make a difference. And you, you find, you know, whether it was a German parish, English-speaking parish, um, that's what they learned and taught in schools and stuff, and just to help people fit into society. Now, the difficulty is, is that what was good back then, we've seen a tremendous decline to the present. And all you got to do is Google and find out that, you know, when I was in school, we almost, in the United States, probably were educating five million young Catholics. That was back in the 60s and 70s with about 11 to 12,000 schools. Fast forward it to 2022, we're down to about 1.6 million students and about 5,900 Catholic schools. So things, in a sense, are a challenge for the church in how to continue Catholic education. And the whole idea of keep doing the same things over and over, maybe we need to just envision something different. The Quincy, uh, you know, previously we'd spoken earlier, and at one time each parish charged their, each of the parish's elementary schools charged different tuitions. And that was, uh, you know, that was a tough thing for a lot of people when that all became uniform. And now what you're really looking at doing is a, a consolidation of some resources. You know, anybody will talk to you about bulk purchases, and if you have one school buying paper and this school buying paper, this school buying paper, if you buy a whole bunch of paper together, you can get it cheaper. Correct. And also having a person to oversee that instead of having three to four people oversee that, that's another efficiency. Correct. So, and that's that's really sort of just the first steps in what you're looking to do is basically that kind of consolidation to bring about some efficiencies, correct? Correct. And like I said, the whole purpose of our listening sessions was um, we were challenged at the very beginning. If we didn't have the Catholic school system we have now, and you created one, what would it look like? And so we took up that challenge and we, we sort of um, had a brainstorming ideas. And the difficulty was is that um, it was at the same time as COVID. Uh -huh. 
So I don't know about you, but I hate virtual meetings. <laughs> Only meetings, period. Yeah. Well, <laughs> 45 minutes, no more. But the virtual <laughs> meetings, and I just hated them. And so we would meet less often and probably not produce the, the stuff that we were supposed to be doing. Um, but the, it just took a long time. And then the other difficulty is, is that we then had personnel changes. We had two new priests coming into Quincy. The other two priests that were part of the QCES um, were on board, but then they leave. So then you got to educate the ones coming on what, we're do, what we were trying to do. And basically, from my perspective, I think one of the treasures we have here in Quincy is Quincy Notre Dame. I really do. Um, it's one of those, I, I feel a strong allegiance to it. And to the extent that the Catholic schools remain strong, to the extent, well, Quincy Notre Dame remains strong. But if we start to weaken losing enrollment, it's going to hit the high school. And as I said, I consider Quincy Notre Dame to be a treasure that we all share and enjoy. And I don't want to see it ever lose, losing its, its momentum, its, uh, its mission, its role for our community. Well, look at what, look, again, look at what uh, some other areas are struggling. Look what Rock Island Alleman's struggling with right yeah, now. Yeah, very much I so. Mean, they're, they, I mean, there are a lot of problems. I mean, I mean, the athletics gets a lot of the headlines and all that, but they've had problems ever since COVID because they lost so many students. You know, Quincy, Notre Dame, and the Catholic school system was very fortunate. This whole area was fortunate that our schools, for the most part, stayed open and right. kept going through right. COVID. We cut off the end of, 20, of the first year, but we've gone the rest of the way through. And now that we have come out of that, and hopefully we are completely through it, now we want to look at the future, and while Quincy Notre Dame is is strong right now, um, if your foundation weakens, your entire building then weakens. And that's that's the whole purpose of what we've done is trying to be proactive. Because the what, when the schools are reactive, they end up closing. But if you start preparing for the future, uh, chances are you can put put your heads together and examine the problems and difficulties, and create a solution. One of the areas that we tapped into was Kankakee. Now, I, I don't know how we can compare the communities, but they had almost seven parish schools, declining enrollments. They had, so that affected Kankakee, Bishop McNamara. Mm -hmm. And so they decided, well, we're gonna come together and we're gonna make it much more efficient and we're going to have a, a one school system so that from pre-K through 12 years of high school, um, they would operate as a system and that they did. And yes, it took it at the first beginning, it took a hit, dropped in enrollment by 20, 30%. But two, year, two, two or three years later, the people finally realized, hey, it's not so bad. And they all came back. Well, we've already done this here in Quincy with the combining of St. Anthony's and St. Dominic's. And then, you know, you had uh, St. John's, we became all saints. And then, you know, St. Mary's right. is blessed sacrament. We've gone through this before. And you're always, if, you're, if your enrollment is declining, you're always going to go through it. And if you're just going to try to do the same thing without saying, hey, let's see if we can stem this tide. And that's really what you're trying to do. What can we do to keep that from happening where we don't have to just say, okay, one of our four parishes is struggling. Okay, that one's gone. Now we're down to three parishes. Right. And then 20 years down the road, we're down to two. Right. And as you said, then your lower enrollment means less at Quincy Notre Dame. And again, when you look at it, and you talk to, and again, going to Kankakee and, and looking at the other communities, the diocese in general, there aren't, that many Catholic high schools left in the entire diocese. No, I think there's about six. So six and or seven, and it's a big diocese. I mean, so you look at that and you want to say, you know, you want to keep the Quincy Notre Dame's, the Jacksonville route, Sacred Heart Griffin, at all, and how you do that is trying to keep this going with something. Yeah, the same thing's not going to work. And the diocese, I, I would, let me just ask you this too, the, the diocese and the bishop, they're receptive to this, I would assume. They're receptive and they're not pushing it. Okay. This, this is one of the things, this is the beautiful part of it. You know, I, I've been here in Quincy for the last 11 years. 
And one of the things I noticed is that it's, Quincy is like one big family. We may have different parishes and stuff, but we're still one big family. And the, when I, the priests were getting along well, were able to talk, the principals were getting along well. They formed the Qu Quincy Catholic Edu Education Elementary School Association um, so that we weren't in competition with each other. We weren't compete competing, but we were working together. And so, again, it was talking about same t tuition, trying to better each school um, without, in a sense, uh, with the financials, um, with enrollment and stuff, without it, the enrollment diminishing. So, again, it's, it's a matter of working together. Then all the parishes in Quincy also started having what we call this stewardship this attitude of stewardship within the parishes. And that has helped tremendously. But still, um, our teachers need to be competitive. We need to be competitive in, in salaries. Yeah. And everything seems to be going up instead of going down. Sure. And we want to keep the enrollment. We, we we're having, well, it looks like this next year is um, good as far as enrollment is concerned, especially in our kindergarten schools. Um, however, but we also realize if you look at the last 10 years, we have the peaks and valleys. And enrollment may be sharp one year, and the next year it's down. When you look at uh, the, 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 the proposal, um, and you have a person, and again, I think uh, the what, what is the person, I mean, is it a superintendent? Is it a principal of all the schools? What is that? Is that kind of what that person would be, to the overseer? The over, the, when we, we, well, first and foremost, it's like, we really don't have a plan as such. Right. You know, I, and That's I, what I'm saying. This is, we're all spitballing yeah. all this. So. And people think we, we're pulling a fast one over them, and we're not, in all, in all honesty. If we could keep the same things the same way, we'd all feel more comfortable. Sure. But I can guarantee if we did that, we'd be down to two schools. So we had to rethink and how can we include everybody? And so we, as I said, we had these listening sessions and we listened and we're still listening and people are still writing. And it's, we are taking into consideration all of those things. Now, what we were planning on doing was have a new, what we call a new governing board. Right. And that governing board, um, so somebody has to, there's a corporate board, and the corporate board is basically made up of the pastors and the representative from the bishop. Because for us to be a Catholic school, we have to have that representative from the bishop. And in, and in fact, the only superintendent is the superintendent of the, all the schools in, of Springfield. Okay. So, but we need somebody to give us direction and guidance, maybe to keep us... Um, focused to keep us um, pushing forward to the for the future. And so <clears throat> from this governing board board that we would, or this, this um, corporate structure that we would have, we would select, we'd have another, what they call a board of limited jurisdiction. And that board would basically um, help carry out a, a plan for the future. I don't know what that plan is. You know, when you, t when you sit around and, and sort of storm, um, brainstorm, a lot of things come out. How can we best be efficient? And so what, what the beautiful part about what the plan that we were talking about, and it's, it's not anything that's so structured that it can't change, but one of the things we noticed, how about Catholic education for even from birth? And so we considered in a sense from um, even before three to two daycare. That would, with a special influence on um, our, our faith being very much a part of it. Then we looked at, okay, how, how, what can, how can we utilize all of our schools? How can we make it more efficient and work closer with Quincy Notre Dame to produce an eighth grade product that's gonna be, flow right into the high school? So Quincy Notre Dame then would become a part of our system. So it's not an, a separate entity, but it would eventually become 
a part of who we are as a Catholic school system. In, in uh, looking at the, uh, the informational video that you put together, one of those th discussions is to basically a middle school, a, a Catholic middle school. Now, that obviously would require two things. It would require being in one of the existing parish schools or it re would require a new building. Again, when those things start getting bandied about, that's when people are like, oh, we're going to build something? That's going to cost money. Mm -hmm. So... I'd love to have somebody say, Father, I'll take care of it. I'll give you $25 million. <laughs> well, sure. Yeah, we'll take it. And we'll, we'll build the K through 8th, our pre-K, our daycare to 8th grade school. Yeah. But that's not, that's unrealistic. So we have to take what we got and see what, how best we can work this through. And the, you know, Bob, the beautiful part about this is that Quincy is unique. It's the only place that you could start in preschool and go through 16 years of college, even college, in a Catholic school system. We don't know how unique and special that is. And I just think we have an opportunity. And like I said, we did a lot of brainstorming. A lot of things got out. You know, oh, they're going to do this, they're going to do yeah. that. Rumors were spreading. And as if we had this, I don't have all the answers. The committee doesn't have all the answers. We were given a task. We fulfilled the task, and now we're listening to the responses that are coming. People, yeah, people just assume this is fait accompli. No, because we not. don't want, the last thing we want is the same thing that happened in 2005. Yeah. Because people are still bitter over that, and we recognize that. And I, somebody said, well, how long will this take? I don't know. I don't know. You just took my last question. What's the timeline? I, I, <laughs> you don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> Because, I, but we want people to know that we're listening. We've heard them and um, we continue to hear them. And it's not that we're trying to close anything. We're trying to keep all of our schools identified as Catholic and keep them very fiscally responsible and um, progress with it so that we, the product that we're producing continues to be a great product for Quincy Notre Dame. Well, along with this interview, we will also have the uh, video, po the informational video posted, and also you will be able to pro provide your feedback via email at feedback at quincycatholicschools.org, correct? We're getting them. I'll bet. <laughs> well, Father Leo, I appreciate the time as always. Thanks a lot, and uh, best of luck, and I'm sure we'll be talking about this again down the road. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks, Father Leo. Okay. That's all the time we have for now. I'm Bob Goff. Have a great week.